Hannah never reached hurricane strength while passing the Abacos. The center of circulation came within 50 miles east of Hopetown around 11 p.m. last night. During the night, Abaco experienced strong tropical storm force winds, overcast skies, and continuous rain. At the break of dawn, evidence of storm manifested itself by way of serious flooding. Water in the streets at the port and airport road flooded. Houses in the low-income community of the mud flooded. At the Marsh Harbor Airport, the apron flooded from the terminal along the taxiway extending east to zigzag airways continuing across the street to the restaurant. At North Abaco, the flooding was worse. The Treasure Key Primary School became the newest lake with water more than 15 inches deep across the entire school ground and basketball court protruding onto the Essiboodle Highway. Further down the street, cars flooded up to their doors. This huge body of water, together with the continuous rain, whipped up from the southwest winds and came on shore at high tides on the south side of Treasure Key. Unity Baptist Church, another area that suffered serious flooding. The Sandbank community was hit hard with flooding. Every house had water at least one foot inside. I lost everything, she said. My carpet, my clothes, my food, everything I had. My two children and I have no place to sleep. We need help, this woman said. Residents say the only life lost may have been that of an animal, with this dog swimming from house to house in search of her pups. Abaconians are back to normal, at least for the next two or three days, as all eyes are now on Hurricane Ike, headed towards the chain of islands. Understanding the dynamics of a tropical cyclone will help planners better prepare and give better evacuation advice to residents. The islands of the Bahamas are peculiar. They have ocean on one shoreline and flats and wetlands on the other side. The passage of Storm's Eye, once known to emergency managers, can reduce risks to residents. Let's examine this tropical storm, Hannah. Hannah's center of circulation traveled just to the east of the Abacos. The wind field at the center is stronger. And most importantly, the winds counter-rotate around the center of circulation. As the storm passes on the Atlantic side of Abaco, northeast winds were first to be realized. This brought battering waves from the Atlantic onto the shores. As the storm moved further north northwest, the winds became more northerly, bringing more Atlantic waves on the shore. As Hannah moved further north, the counterclockwise rotation brought the winds from the west and then eventually southwest. Now that's a worst case scenario for the flats and the Treasure Key area in particular. All along the Treasure Key area you have wetlands. Sandbanks is on the wetland coast. Treasure Key Primary School and Unity Baptist are also on the west wetland coast. Southwest winds blew for hours bringing in water from the flats. Now this had an even greater impact because it occurred with rain, rising, and high tides. Forecasters must now provide information for specific islands based on the local knowledge of the topography. Where are the highlands and where are the wetlands and communities within proximity to these wetlands? The water at Sandbanks came from the south side. It had nowhere else to go but the main S.C. Boodle Highway, where it crested, flooding the related communities.
The mud challenges occurred because of rainfall as this community is in a low-lying area. The bypass road extended from SC Boodle Highway to the government dock flooded to the west side because of the blocked drainage at the Ministry of Works office dockside. Swales and trough reached their max. The airport sits in the central Abaco water reserves. Measures to mitigate this flooding must be approached with engineering expertise. Hannah was only a tropical storm, a fast-moving one at that. The lessons learnt will help with future forecast and planning.